Hey guys, Gino and Sam back from Market Movers and today we have episode 4 of Who's That Entrepreneur. Today we have Mr. Paul O'Connor of Paul O'Connor Cars and Paul's going to tell us a little bit about himself and how he ended up here in Dungarvan <clears throat> with the beautiful car garage you've just seen in the pre-clip. <laughs> uh, thanks Gino. Go for it, Paul. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I'm Paul anyway. Um, in car sales probably 8, 9 years now. Um, opened this place nearly three years ago now at this stage. Um, uh, so it's, I saw a bit of a market, or gap in the market in Dungarvan, uh, gave it a go. Um, it's growing a lot, thankfully. Actually growing a lot through, throughout the time of COVID, people were buying a lot of cars. Um, yeah. So that was actually good for business, would you believe? Yeah. And they had nothing else to spend money on. Yeah, um, that's a, that was a big thing, wasn't it? People were not going on holidays. Yeah, like, if, like if you think about it for a second, like you think like, if people aren't going on holidays, if they're not mm -hmm. getting married, because the weddings are called off, yeah. if they're not going to the pub every weekend, uh, and actually, no. I think people were going to say it was let's change the car. Yeah. So it kind of worked in our favour in that regard. Again, everything else in life was was awful for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For the car was actually all right. And you did okay getting stock. Yeah, we're you okay. Were okay yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We we used to get a lot of stuff in from the UK and um, yeah. back pre Brexit. <clears throat> That's after stopping now. There's no real value there at the moment. Um, so we kind of get cars off just anyone that's selling them really. Um, private individuals. We buy them off some dealer groups. Um, bits and pieces like yeah. that. So it's all Ireland based. Generally, at the moment, yeah. well, and France, yeah, we got an M4 over in France. <laughs> yeah. It was actually, well, it was a Irish guy that owned it, lived in Strasbourg, um, so we went and over to Strasbourg to, to collect it. Yeah, that's nice in France. Bit of an adventure, a bit of a holiday, luckily. yeah, it was, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's but that's been kind of the general uh journey of it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's growing a lot now, um, we sell we're in around 500 cars a year now at this stage. Um, so we've been, big yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, been, it's been pretty good. Like, um, we have an auto body business as well. Um, mm -hmm. We have a service workshop, so there's 10 of us here in total. We have 10 staff. So in three years, you've opened three garages? Yep. Yeah. Pretty much, yes. Actually, we've probably, we probably opened, open, yeah. yeah, like the auto body was the last to open. That's open mm -hmm. about a year, so I suppose we opened three within less than two years. Yeah. So do you have everything, you have everything runs all under Paul O'Connor? Yeah. Um, you're valuing your outsource still. Do yeah, you? I yeah, used yeah. to do it myself, yeah. um, but it was just getting a little bit messy. And to be honest, there's just two very good balloters in Dungarvan and yeah. they actually do a better job than we were doing ourselves. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, it's nice to support local as well. It's <laughs> nice to keep yeah. business in, in um, around the area. So, uh, yeah, we, we use a few, few guys here. Um, half the reason we were opening the service workshop and the auto body place was, I suppose, um, we were going through a lot of cars and we were actually finding there was delays and there was little bottlenecks in the system. Yeah. Um, around Dungarvan, we'll say, like, so a lot of our cars were being held up and we wanted to get through cars get them ready and get them out as quick as possible so we just start i just started to set it up my own service workshop um so that was why we started that i suppose just from speed and efficiency one and two yeah. for quality mm -hmm. control as well because um, yeah. we could get cars checked exactly the way we wanted them yeah uh, we get the warranty dealt with exactly as we wanted it as well and we knew that you know we were everything's done right everything's done right yeah and again we we're using a few other guys and we'd no real issues but we wanted it to be you know to be spot on like, yeah, you know, yeah. That, and you've yeah. got a good team of lads in fairness like you've a yeah. lot you've a lot of them how many lifts do you have over there we've just put in our fourth lift there yeah, uh, the other day so um we have two qualified mechanics and we've two apprentices at the moment and one girl just started last week oh local uh yeah they're all pretty, yeah. yeah they're all pretty local yeah, yeah uh, they're all from around the around the area um so and then we have a panel beater as well um and I'm sure we have a few sales guys service manager all that kind of thing so. it's good like you built up a big team pretty fast and yeah because like, yeah. Yeah. Like, you were you were in here on your own I was in here on my own yeah I, I started yeah summer it was kind of May nineteen we opened yeah and I was in here on my own and <laughs> I was in here on my own bored during the day. And then my father was finished work at three o'clock. Um, he was working. He was retired now, but he was working. He'd been here at like half three, and it was obviously delighted for him to come in. So he'd <laughs> and, <laughs> and he'd help like collecting cars and everything like that. Um, yeah, because you've both your parents involved. As well, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They're yeah. both retired now. My dad does a lot of um, like deliveries, collections, um, driving a recovery mm -hmm. truck around the place, doing NCT runs, all that yeah. kind of thing. And my mother has worked in accounts for forty five odd years. She retired about a year ago. Yeah. So she looks after all my bookkeeping and my accounts and my bar returns and everything like that. Brilliant. So um, oh, yeah. again, it's um, they're both like been like I would have been so lost without them like, yeah, starting yeah. the business. But even now, like they're they're. But your father loves it. Oh, he loves he it. He loves it. Like, yeah. <laughs> putting around the truck. He like, does. Yeah, yeah. He's he always wanted to do that. Actually, like he kind of <laughs> he was working in factories and all all his life. Like, but he loves driving. Like, it was so, the complete opposite to what he was doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah. He's often his recovery truck. Um, and then on the side of my recovery truck, I have like you buy Breno delivers. Yeah, so nice. his name is Brendan. We, yeah. we affectionately call him Breno. Um, so yeah, he's uh, yeah, he loves it. Like, and that's a good help for us as well. So he goes off tipping away, collecting cars, delivering. But like the because you sell all over the country. We really. do, yeah. yeah the yeah. logistics is, is huge. You see, um, like 
before, obviously, you were getting cars from the UK and everything like that. You were getting stuff delivered on a recover, you know, on a big car yeah, transport, yeah, yeah. and it was just all landing on it there. Like, but the way we, first of all, I suppose the way we buy cars now, we like say, you know, this week we'd collect a car in Galway, we're going to Tipperary next week, Limerick next week, or collecting a car in Dublin next week. Cars we're buying, mm-hmm. or just people that are selling them. So you need to just collect them um, and bring them back and everything like that. So it's it's there's a lot more logistics that are involved than there used to be. And then with the online thing, like during COVID, we couldn't open the sales showroom or the offices yeah. to people. So how did you work that by people coming in and seeing stuff? We, we, we didn't. Yeah. On lo- this was all online. He was all online. Now, luckily enough, I suppose everything was online and sending videos. A lot of car sales players really jumped on that like when... Yeah. Um, when COVID happened and everything like that, like this, we'd send you a video, send pictures mm-hmm. of your car onto WhatsApp. Like it, everyone's doing that now. Like we were kind of doing social media and online deliveries a bit before COVID. Now we weren't the only ones. It was a lot of cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More before everyone started doing it, I suppose. Um, so we'd send them on a video. We'd appraise their trade in, and, mm-hmm. and like you know, I suppose when we knew we were selling a lot online, that's when. You know, you really have to focus on your online reputation as well. Like, you know, yeah, so if you look yeah. online, we have 260, 270 five star reviews. Um, you'll be, Is that on Google reviews? Uh, half on Google, half on Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're about, yeah, I think it's 125 on Google, uh, about 140 maybe or something on Pretty, Facebook. Yeah. Wait, which is that's the weird thing, because we were talking about it on the way down. The Google reviews have become so important for people mm-hmm. when they read things. Like, so there was a situation in my own work that they won't mind seeing. Basically, there was. They had like four point nine or something, hmm. yeah. and then there was someone with like four point nine five doing a similar sort of thing. Yeah, and they told them we're going with the other guys just based on that the Google review was slightly better than yours. Oh, it's it's crazy. And man. that was, I thought I was like kind of was like Jesus, that's mad because they're putting massive focus into Google reviews and how important it is to have your online presence like perfect. Mm. Um, which that probably wasn't the case pre COVID. No, it's it's not like I suppose if you think about it, right? A lot of the times people are. You know they're committed to buying a car they're paying a deposit like and they're mm-hmm. applying for finance they're giving you all your financial details over the phone but you know, with consent and all yeah but like and they're doing all that on based on your reputation like you know they can yeah. be in galway and they're like okay we well, better see what this fella's like your read reviews are all good like so yeah, that yeah. gives a bit of you know trust and a bit of faith in the garage like so of all things like you know cars are the second biggest purchase people make like after a house is generally mm-hmm. yeah. speaking yeah. so you need to have trust like you know um i suppose people they you know, customers are a lot more educated now in terms mm. of cars and in terms of, of garages they're buying from before we could just the salesman. Oh, the salesman told me that was a good car now. He said no, that was yeah, a good yeah, yeah. They said that was that. People know now, like they can yeah, see you can it, research just, everything. You know, and, and they know everything before they even come into you. Yeah, I think yeah, that they're dying know. like the cowboys <clears throat> motor trade, like there's still a few out there, but they're kinda of dying out a little bit like you know, yeah. customers are wise now, like and too easy to catch them out now. It is, yeah. yeah. Too easy um to so that's when I kinda of said like, right, you know, you know, you if you're doing it online, you have to think of everything online. So your online presence mm-hmm. and your online reputation is hugely important. Like you know, so I think. And you've got a face to the business. You are your face to the business, which mm-hmm. is something you focused on almost instantly. Yeah. So Instagram stories, Instagram posts, you're in all of them. Like. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like even with even, even with Marky, like he's like a face now. Like so he probably goes <laughs> yeah. to the uh, shop, and people are like, oh Marky, you know. It's 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 mad. Like and people come in here and they're like, well Marty, how are you? And Marty, you're saying me sometimes. Marty's like, okay, do I sell a car? Yeah, who's this person? He's only on you him before he came in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, just you like, know, because I have him in fairness, he's a good sport. Like, you know, I have him on Instagram a bit. Like, but you know, we were on a Christmas night out in Dungarvan and people were like, well, Marty, how are you getting on? Paul, how are you? And I'm like, this is odd. Yeah, yeah. 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 Especially in <laughs> you know it as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, you know, when you, you you're talk to someone, you're like, people, yeah. you know, you might sell a car to a couple of hundred people in a year, but like they would only bought a car of one salesman in the year. So in they three, remember yeah. four years even, they only and bought one there's car. there's kind of the yeah. awkward situation of kind of like, should I know you or not? <laughs> or did you just see me on Instagram or something like that? Yeah, yeah. But um, look, again, it's it's kind of, I kind of wanted even, a lot of places have, um, you know, I think people buy off people as well. And people buy off kind of uh, a face they trust or a person they trust. Yeah. You know, you know, sometimes people, I think like, you know, I don't know, if a garage is called a oh, uh, classic quality car sales, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, premium, you know, yeah, premium. Yeah. it's almost like a premium car, premium yeah, cars, yeah, they yeah, all yeah. have a name, but, but, but I just think, you know, Paul O'Connor cars, and I was like, right, that's me, I'm happy to put my name behind it, I'm happy to put like my reputation or something behind everything we do, I'm not hiding behind any, anything yeah. at all, I'm here, I'll happily, you know, I'm, I put my, as I said, put my own name on all of that kind of stuff, so I think that's kind of important, like, oh, 100%, yeah, and it makes a huge, like, I was saying it with, when we were starting Cafe Pompeii, I was saying, just putting our faces on it as much as possible, because people yeah. then know there's a face to the business, it's not just like, yeah. you know, whatever. Because like, you notice just, it on the lights and stuff on things, if you put up a 
picture of oh my a product. God. Crazy, isn't yeah. it? And then a product of your, a picture of yourself with the product. <laughs> or a like a customer crazy. handover photo. Customer you handover photo. We, we put up like, you know, we say, we say on social media, we put up a picture of a car. It depends on how nice the car is. Sometimes mm. now... Yeah, so you get nice stuff in here as well. So, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you get like... You can Fifteen likes in it, and if it's a nice guy, you make it hundred, hundred and fifty. It depends really. But if you put up a handover picture, it's like minimum three hundred. Yeah, it's or, crazy. Or yeah, if you yeah. put up someone that, that gets a bit engaged and people are interacting, you know, it's do you already anything to do with staff or anything like that? Like people react to people, like you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. and I, I think Instagram have a bit to do with it because I believe that they'd hold back. Like if you're putting up a picture of an ad or a picture of an ad per se, but you're not advertising it with an Instagram. Mm. I'd imagine they that they it. don't promote it as much either. Yeah. You know, they'd hold it back a bit because you're not paying for it. But that was something I wanted to talk to you about because for the first time the other day, I got an ad for a car on my Instagram. And it was really? you. Yeah. You, hey, you didn't get it before, no? No, I've never I, got I, it I was before. Like, I was going to target you know. Because like, I suppose working in car sales, the last thing I do on my own phone is look up cars Oh, so maybe the whole time I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <my> TV, like, <laughs> see what this guy has to say. <laughs> but yeah, so I got my first Paul O'Connor ad the other day. Did you? And I was like, ah, oh, get this fucker off my phone. <laughs> I was like, looking at this fella. <laughs> well, maybe it's probably going. Maybe it's probably going to people that don't follow the page that wouldn't see the content. Yeah, but that's because yeah. I mean, I'm liking all your stuff anyway. So maybe they're holding back the ads from seeing my from coming to me. But that's something we wanted to talk about. Is how much, or do you do mainly organic? Do you find a lot of your stuff is organic? So you have a lot of followers. You have like 13,000 followers. Yeah, we've got, I think it's about 12, over 12 and a bit or something on it. Um, we, we do a bit of both, to be honest. Yeah. Like, um, I suppose I've noticed a big difference. When I sponsor stories or sponsor posts and I do it over a three or four day period, mm-hmm. um, you'd see like there's a, there's a big difference in the jump of your amount of followers. Like, yeah. Um, like I try not to spend too, too much on it. Like I'd spend a couple of hundred a month maybe or yeah. something like that on sponsored yeah. ads. Like, um, it was growing mainly organically. Now we did do a few competitions throughout the... Years, we yeah. gave away a car. Uh, it was an older yeah. car. We gave away a car there probably uh, a year and a bit ago. Um, we got a couple of thousand followers off that. Now, we did. I think when you do competitions, as time goes on, because they're not real people interested in your business, yeah, they're just yeah, people they, they, they start losing yeah. the, the, the back a few. So I'd say we gained 5,000, but over time, then we, we lost back, I'd say, two nearly. 50, and you get a lot of bots. Yeah, you did. Because yeah, I do. remember when we did, and um, when we worked together, we did a TV giveaway. And we had one particular guy in here. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you remember the guy with the Tato picture? <laughs> yeah. And we're doing a competition now in Cafe Pompeii, yeah. and he's yeah. entering it every morning. The same fella. Like. It, yeah. So he's at it, like, no, they're probably bots. They're mostly bots, it. because we, we checked, I checked a few people that were resharing things over yeah. and over, and mm. it was something like 4 a.m. Yeah. And they yeah, said yeah. they were from Ireland. And I was like, hmm. But then the pages look genuine, like, his picture's up, like, years ago. Years ago, at things. And, like, yeah, but it's very strange. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a bit of that. Um, we did give away a TV and a beanbag during lockdown as well, like maybe mm-hmm. a thousand out of that. So kind of grew it that way. But then I think we just kind of just grew it. It's a lot of us organically as well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we get a lot of views on our stories. Well, the thing is, and if you put up a picture of someone, you're going to gain four followers or five followers, minimum, their family, friends, yeah, yeah. boyfriends, yeah. girlfriends, whatever it is. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, like, we were looking just like from doing the coffee, coffee machine competition, like 500. Four to five hundred followers, like oh, yeah, yeah, just from that yeah, yeah, in a week or two, like yeah. yeah. So you, you get you get huge. Um, like what we're big on is what I like doing as well. Is it's just Instagram stories, right? Yeah. We do posts as well. Sometimes I like I try and do a post a day, or if I can at all. Sometimes I do two. Sometimes I forget and do three. But I'm always on my stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Day. Um. So stories is is huge. I think yeah. you know. That's I, what I, I don't. I look at stories way more than I look at posts. On you my you kind of yeah. just scroll across the stories yeah, yeah, on yeah, Instagram yeah. rather than scrolling down <laughs> through the feed, like. Yeah, um, and they're quick. They're little, little bite-sized, little yeah. you know, bits of light entertainment or whatever. So we and were, that was something I wanted to say. You don't take it too seriously, no. which I like because I was only when I was recording outside. Maggie pointed out the sign, like, and it says like we take in trade and even bad ones. <laughs> yeah, even yeah, really yeah, bad ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, that's actually gas. And then you have another sign in another room. It's like. What's it say? Smile if you want to buy. Oh a yeah, car. it's like um, if you want to will, buy you, will you buy a car from me? Uh, yes equals smile. No equals double back. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all start smiling. <laughs> yeah, and it's just funny stuff like that because you can't do that in somewhere that's too corporate. You can't like yeah. as I said, like yeah. if you were the main dealer brand now. Yeah. You couldn't post. So for I, 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 just, I kind of put up what I want, and some of the stuff I wouldn't say it'd be risky, like, but it'd just be a bit edgy. Some the odd time I yeah. look at something, I like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you know, I was like, I, I'll give it, a, I'll give it a go. But like at the end of the day, like you have to remember with social media, like. Car sales is the easiest industry, I think, in, in the country, anyway, for sure, to be different in. Because yeah. everyone's the exact Definitely. same. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Buy this car for 50 euro per week. Uh, this car has front fog lamps, front headlamp washers. No one cares. Like, it's very serious. It is, it is serious. And I think, uh, you know, 
so if you want to just do something different, like as I said, you have to remember as well, people, you know, mm. you want to make it, I suppose, entertaining first of all, because that's what social media is all about. Yes. And you want to make it uh, something that will stand out in people's minds as well, but you want to just make it lighthearted. And I think car sales would have had, I would have think, anyway, uh, let's, let's be honest, it's a bit of a bad rep over the years. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, 100%. If people aren't really into cars, especially, um, they can find a whole process of going into a big shiny showroom with, with traditionally pussy, uh, pushy salespeople. That can be quite intimidating. And especially suits. Suits. Like the, Do you know COVID what? killed the suit. It did. COVID killed. Like, I, I worked in main dealer for the last three years, and when we started, I literally had a full suit. Mm. Tied the whole lot, the big long jackets, and then by the end of it, like I was wearing a shirt, no tie, and a jumper. Like you're wearing, like you don't, you haven't probably worn a suit in three years. I have more suit or even or tie. <laughs> when we were like, like, like dressing before. smart, I, I have my coat and socks are right. Like, yeah, I was going to compare socks. I went with Van Gogh before I came. Yeah, I went with yellow socks with toast on them. Yeah, I should have went um, a little bit harder. To be fair, I didn't think of who I was competing today. But it's, today, it's, but it's kind of. I suppose you want to, I wanted to kind of make for social media. You wanted to make it approachable for people, right? Um, I'm black. But anyway, I wanted to make a kind of um with social media I wanted to make it approachable for people, right? I had pictures of my socks, I had pictures of my dog up in it, mm. I had pictures of me and the lads just having a laugh here, um I had pictures of things I find funny. I was doing a daily dad joke for a while. Like, you know, you have to uh, you know, you want to make it as, as approachable and as hu- human like as possible, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So people come in here, they're like, Well these lads are a laugh. Yeah, these guys are easy going. They're not going to force me into buying a car. And to be honest, we don't. That's not our style. Do you know the cars sell themselves? Like so, I think you're kind of creating a, an online presence for yourself. That's um, would actually reflects what, what, how we carry on business here. To be fair, like yeah, you know, yeah. we have a laugh in here all day. And I, and I day. noticed things like even last night. I won't say his name because he'd probably be ringing me today. Like, but one of my friends texted me last night, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you know Polo Corner cars. I'm looking at this. I think it's a cash car or something you have here or something like that. I'm going to call him tomorrow." They're sound, aren't they? They're sound, aren't they? I was like, no one ever rings me like, oh, you work in this garage. They're sound, aren't they? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And that's a, you're giving off a very personal impression. And I've had multiple people, and when I was working in car sales, like, people who should be buying cars from me, get on to me, oh, I'm going to get on to Paul O'Connor there. You you like him, you know him. And I'm like, yeah, he's sound. Buy a car from me. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no. But, I know, but yeah. You know, and they do, and that's what they think, like, is they're buying it off Paul O'Connor. They're not buying it off a big company like and even if they don't get through even if they get through to the lads like both mm. lads are dead on it so yeah exactly you know I mean? like, it's, very, so, it's very personable like you, you know, know you want the whole uh, everyone's experience here from start to finish like I said we have the service and we have the auto body and we have everything mm-hmm. like that as well so if it, it's all interlinked together right and if people buy a car from us here grand that's perfect anyone can sell a car where you really shine as a business is the is the after sales right so when they're talking to Hannah below in the workshop or even if you're in with Derek getting an auto body thing sorted if they have a good experience there, it all ties into the whole brand. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. like, if you have a good experience down there, or if even just normal service customers we have that wouldn't have bought a car here, they have a good experience below there, and the, the they're dealing with one of the mechanics or Hannah below, it's um, and if they have a nice experience there, like that's a nice place to do business. Their sound, we actually when I'm thinking of change, actually, yeah, my uh, my sister's looking for a car. I'll send her off. Yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. it all ties in together, like you know. So I think you kind of have to think bigger picture in a lot of, in the way you kind of it's all tied in together like and it's all so do you find you actually have a lot of returning customers over the years yeah. so say from previous garages that you worked in have you brought customers I yeah no I have yeah should I say that <laughs> <laughs> going into your own CRM like. no uh, no but people would have seen a lot of people would have seen oh I've seen you out on your own yeah, yeah, yeah I bought a car off you in X garage over you know a couple of years ago so we would have done that, um, not, not a huge amount of them, but like we would have, yeah, it would have been a, a small enough percentage of it, but even people that bought a car off us in 2019. I was about to say, you're 20, on your third year now, that's the, that's the year. Like you'll often see, together, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, you'd see in our stories, it's like, oh, previously sold by us yeah, in 2020, yeah. like, because we do, we get a lot of people upgrading two years, and that's that's the best compliment you can get, I think, as a business. 100%, like, yeah. And there's something else, there's something new you would have had to learn opening your own business, and it will reflect true to customers, is how you take care of your staff, because mm. that's a big thing. Uh, and it's probably not the easiest thing to learn, especially when your name's on the door. So you have to, you have to have guys and girls that you trust, mm-hmm. but you have to be taking care of them, but making sure they're working. And that's a hard dynamic because your name is on. At the end of the day, yeah. it's your, they're your, like you know, they're your staff. They're, it's your reputation. Like. Yeah. And if you don't take care of them, they won't take care of you. But that's it, like. Yeah. So you like you seen you kicking the ball at Marky yesterday, like and stuff like that. So you obviously that was something new you had to learn. Yeah, yeah, you, no, and, no. Yeah, and you would have had obviously because you would have been staff up until you owned your own place. So, so how do you find out? Do you find when you're even hiring people, you're thinking, 
John, am I going to get on with this person as well as or what yeah, way you, you have to have that. Um, I suppose the way I manage people, right, is um, you can ask any lads here. Is I'm I'm not a micromanager, okay? So I'm not kind mm-hmm. of looking at I'm not over the sales all day, right? Are you shopping online there for five minutes or, or what are you doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Loan workshop. I'm not like I might be in the workshop out of my ten hours a day I spend here or whatever it is. I might be in the workshop for half an hour, okay? So like I wouldn't be there all day every day. So when I'm taking on people or if I'm working with people, I have to have people that I feel that they're I have to have one to be trust. Trust is huge with me. Like mm. trust, honesty, honesty, transparency. Now I give this all back to people. So, but yeah, I expect yeah. it in return. So I suppose once you have that, so if I'm interviewing someone, like let's say if I was interviewing a salesperson, okay, and I was like, okay, that person is a, is a shrewd operator. I'd say they could sell a load of cars, but I feel they're a little bit too selfish, may a bit too money hungry. I was like, okay, well, I'll have to keep an eye on this person. Yeah. Really keep an eye on them or they will just try and do everything for their own person. Yeah. Game. So you have to have a bit of a team player. Um, and I suppose yeah. someone, because I'll be fair with someone and I'll give them a bit of, a bit of freedom, right? You'll say, you know, so I'll, I, I, I'll trust them by default unless I have something to prove that it, you know, that, that, that changes my idea on it. So I suppose you have to have someone as, that use honest, hardworking, transparent, but if you so show that trust to people then and they're trusting you back, um, they'll be the same in how they deal with customers. It's all it's it's a culture thing, you know. So that's how they'll yeah, that's that's how the whole the whole business will operate. Like and the same when we sell a car to people, if we say we're you know, we give someone a six months warranty or something like that, and that'll be covered on it. No matter how painful it might be to for us to solve a particular problem or how much hassle it'll be if we say it, our, our word is our bond, like, we yeah, can do it. Like. Yeah, and it's important, <clears throat> it's important no matter what. Like, so the customers can trust us. Yeah. Um, from that point of view as well, I think I think a lot of garages think that customers are out to get you, or no, 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 they're lying about that. That, that doesn't happen that much. If you show them, mm. you, you know, if you're fair to them to begin with, yeah. you hear a lot of garages on about screamer customers, or real tough customers. We hardly ever get them. Yeah, and the Sometimes thing, yeah. it's, it's how they've been treated in the first place. Yeah. There's very few, very, People very... People are alienated, so... Yeah, in the past, from past experiences. Yeah, there's very few like really difficult. Like you might meet like less than five percent of people that we deal with here that, that are difficult, right? And they're just they're, they're not nice people. But that's in every area yeah. of life. Like, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. in other garages they they make some nice people. You know, they turn not even garages in a lot of businesses. It's the way the customer has been treated. Yeah. It, it's, and sometimes it, with cars, customers don't understand. Sometimes it needs to be explained. That's something huge I found. Like some tiny problem. Like uh, I find in new cars. Especially a lot of new cars, the TPS, the tire pressure sensors. Oh yeah. They, they go down one on. PSI, and they're 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 crying like the the lights coming mm-hmm. on, and it's it doesn't matter like Joe. It, yeah. It really, but the cars are sensitive. But once you explain that to a customer, yeah, it's fine. But when a customer has a brand new car a day, and then there's a light in their dash, they're going to be upset straight away. But once you explain what it is, yeah, and how simple it is yeah. to change, and there's a button here that you press, yeah. and it, you're like, it's exactly. But like a lot of problems, everything gets solved. Instantly. A lot of a lot of problems. Like obviously, we were on workshop and all, and you know, say let's say after sales problems. Like you know, you're if you have a car and you sell a car, and within a couple of days there's a problem in it, right? I hate when it happens in a couple of days because it's it's always just bad luck. Yeah, it just leaves, yeah. leave a sour taste in the customer's mouth because they're a machine and, at the end of the day, and they get a bit, yeah. they might get a bit nervous. But like it, it's it's how you respond to that problem is ninety nine percent of it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? If you uh, if you sell a car and within a couple of days it's a problem, but if you are pick up the phone when they ring it, yeah, no problem at all. Solve it straight away. You know, listen, assure them it won't happen again. Well, to the best of our ability, you know, yeah, we're yeah, putting yeah. everything in our power not to make it happen again. Um, if you do that and you actually solve it and say what you're going to do and and actually do it, like um, you know, you're 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 you almost you've almost increased your reputation even though there was an issue, like you know. Um, so that's kind of that's that's very important as well. So is there any problems? Just get them done, like you know, get them solved. Mm. But it all ties into just the the overall kind of mentality of, of the staff and as I said and how we how we operate business, yeah. I think. So I, I take huge pride in that. Yeah. And then you're still so you're like in my opinion, you're a pretty young person. I think you're old, but in as far as <laughs> business you're pretty young. Thanks, you know. Yeah, thirty thirty two. Thirty two old. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> so if you're giving advice now to someone who's younger now like Sure, not everyone's out there trying to open car garage. Yeah, because yeah. that, that it's a big. That's a big on. You took on a big job, like really. Yeah, like, like yeah. people open small things, but what any business? What would be your bit of advice for someone like young um, that wants to think like I really want to go on my own and do something here? Like, because you've done it pretty well, but you waited, you planned out. I remember when you opened this and you were yeah. showing me your plan, and I was thinking, 
I was like, who even has that much time to think about that kind of stuff? You had everything planned. Yeah, like, yeah. uh, well, I, I started the business when I was 30. Um, yeah, I'm 33 next month. Though. Uh, <laughs> old, um, but I, I said it for years, even back before I started in car sales, I always had a kind of thing in my head. It's like, right, I want to be work for myself by the time I'm 30. Um, it was kind of, I remember even saying to my mother and everything like that. And she's like, all right, what line of business is it in? I was like, I haven't decided that yet. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I want to be successful. And I always kind of, you lose credibility when you can't even explain it. But anyway, what do you wear with your plans? And I, anyway, as I started, I, so I said I'd go up my own by the time I'm 30. So I've planned it for a while. But in terms of advice to someone starting off, the, the, the number one, I think, there's a few of them, but you have to do something you love. And I know that's the biggest cliche. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. such a cliche, but like you have to actually enjoy doing it, right? Yeah. And you have to, be, because if you didn't enjoy doing it or like what business you're starting, and if you're try, and it's, it's going to be on your head, if you want to make it successful, mm-hmm. it has to be on your head the whole time. You're going to be thinking about it. You have to be obsessed with it. 24-7. You like you're you working 24-7, really. No, I just, at home watching TV at 9 o'clock in the evening, and it's like, right, I have this folks coming in tomorrow. I'll give them 15 grand for What will I sell that back for, right? What if I put yeah. a set of allies on it? Would I get an extra thousand if I put a set of allies on it? Yeah, no, I suppose so, yeah. Was a, we just we sprayed a front bumper, yeah, that'd be an extra 200 to do. And you're just, your head's going, so if you didn't, if I didn't like doing it, I'd love it, like. Yeah. So if I didn't like it, you'd be hell, because you can't switch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so number one is find what you love, and you find what you can enjoy doing. Mm. And then you can, can become obsessed with it pretty easy, and it's actually, it's not really, it doesn't seem like work, so if I'm thinking of uh, pr- price changes on 15 different cars on a Sunday, when I could be watching TV, but I, I actually would enjoy doing that. You know, that's yeah. that's not work at all for me. Like, so enjoy what you're doing. One, um, d- don't try and two would be don't try and make a quick buck out of it. Right, think everything everything you do in business, you have to be a, a longer term thinking. Okay, so what I mean by that is, um, even when let's say I just you I always go back to warranty things. You might take a short pit if you say if you're selling a car or if you're. Um, Let's even if you own a restaurant, let's say, mm-hmm. and you've um you've a customer that's not really happy with it, never like that. So you look after them. So as you they might have to take a short term financial hit, thinking of your longer term reputation down the line. So you know, say as I said, with, with warranty. So sometimes we we cover something over and above, um that we shouldn't be maybe be covering. But long term, then their sister buys a car, their co worker buys a car, and you have to protect your overall reputation. Same with staff. So if you're wanting to start a business sometimes you give a bit of leniency to a staff member in but in return you'll get longer term loyalty yeah if you're dealing with a supplier try not to be especially when you're starting off try not to be too you think you're being the, the big man or the big woman or whatever trying to be cutthroat and everything like that i think when mm-hmm. you're starting off i don't think you can be cutthroat you yeah. have to work with people as said listen yeah, yeah be yeah. nice to deal with um now there's some maybe cases you have to be a bit cutthroat but be nice to deal with be fair in what you say so if you're dealing with suppliers staff be honest, um, be easy to deal with, don't be too much of a, a ball breaker on, on, on price, I think, especially when you're trying to establish mm-hmm. yourself and become a decent, honest, uh, per- easy enough going person to do business with. So I think they're good. Um, and then I think if you're doing for marketing, just it's try and see what you do a bit differently. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Set yourself differently. Like I, I just found like my niche was... Um, I like talking rubbish on social media about cars, but it was our niche because it was an easy thing to be different. Yeah. A lot of people, if you're an accountant, but like you can, you're really good at graphic design. Like, we'll make it the best, you know, make it the best presented accountancy business ever. Like, yeah, focus yeah, yeah. on that. So just see what you're good at, see what you enjoy doing, and just kind of you know run with that. Then I suppose, like you know, so. So what would have been say if you didn't do cars? What would have been your backup plan? Superstar DJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was big into music and DJing for a number of years. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like, I love business, right? I love, I love the, like, you know, even with what I'm doing now, like, I want to expand it down the line, let's say, in, in what I'm doing at the moment. I love business. I definitely be working for myself. I honestly, like, I'm in car sales since I'm 24 now. Um, I, I, I actually, like, I love it. Like, I couldn't, I, I don't, I'm not sure what about the backup plan yeah, would have yeah. been, like, because ever since I started kind of thinking of it, it was it was going to be yes, this. Yeah. Like I yeah. might, it would have, it would have mm-hmm. probably been something like uh, you know I, I would might have, I might have done courses on e-commerce. I might have started selling yeah. stuff online. Um, down the line, I'd like I'd like to, I'd like to get into, uh, business coaching and everything like that. Maybe helping other people. Yeah, uh, consultation. Uh, yeah, consultation. Yeah. But I think you actually need a bit of clout and a bit of experience before you can start lecturing other people on it. So yeah, 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 I wouldn't yeah. feel I'm qualified to do it yet. But down the line, maybe in my forties or fifties, you know, with uh, you know decades of experience behind me i think i could do that but um for the time being i'll be doubling down on the car sales yeah trying to, trying to do as, as well as possible out of that and yeah and do you, you like your plans obviously like 
when you first started, you probably didn't think you'd have three characters in three years. Oh. So, no, not really. So, and that was something I was reading in a book there during the week. Uh, it was like, start now, get perfect later. Rob Moore. Yeah, 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 I read yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. So, like, you're exactly what you're doing there is you started off with something small. And you were probably at the time worried, oh, this needs to be perfect. Needs, but you find you probably changed nearly everything you were doing. Yeah, you, Since the you, first day to now, like, it's probably a complete different. And I think as well, like, you know, you know, yeah, you have to adapt the whole time. Like, business, like, uh, you know, if you'd have told me three years ago, oh, you're going to have an auto body garage for spraying bumpers. I know nothing about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I still don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. know about it. Like, but it was kind of a necessity. And I saw a gap there, we needed to get it done, and there wasn't many, many places around doing it. So I just said, right, we'll do it. And it's a but tough like, business. So. It is. It's a it tough is. business, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I think you know, people are saying, oh, what's your five year, 10 year plan? Like, you can have goals and visions down the line, like, yeah. but, but adapt to everything on a month by month basis. Or but how you can plan for 10 years you is can't, fun. Like, sure, you don't need. Let's just say with COVID, like, you know, like, where, especially, I'm just using the example, like, the, the sales process obviously has changed to a lot more online the last few years because yeah. of COVID. If COVID thought us out, is it like that you can't predict anything? Yeah. You know, I suppose, like, you know, where I buy cars is completely different than the way yeah. it was three years ago. We used to, I used to be getting them off certain dealers that no longer sell to me or sell to the trade, we'll say. I used to bring cars in from the UK, which I don't do anymore. Um, so that changes. Um, and I think what a lot of businesses, they kind of, they're too stuck on what way the, the way things used to be. Yeah, they're so not ready to adapt. You have yeah, to adapt yeah. the whole time. You and know? they're always the ones that are growing, the ones that are changing constantly. You have to, like, you know, yeah. like I buy most of my stuff. I, I just, like, I, de- I just buy off customers. And we've got a name for ourselves now. It's like, oh, you buy cars, don't you? So it's like, so now we don't even have to promote it. And people come to me every day of the week looking to sell me stock, like we'd say. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Now, it, it's time consuming. It's not for every leader. I'm in a fortunate position, I suppose. I have two, two salesmen that can look after a lot of sales inquiries. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of my time actually buying stock, but look, we're we have a lot of we have a lot of stock, I suppose. So that's yeah, that's and it, it looks like, and you'll see it. I took a video. I went through the whole place. I said, I'll see that. To start. Yeah, we yeah, we we would always have a good stock, I suppose. Like, and there's so. way more outside. I didn't that I didn't even oh, video. Was, yeah, there's loads of stuff outside. Forty five or fifty, kind of at any given time, like, um. But yeah, like as I said, the market changes the whole time. Is mm. you have to adapt the whole time. I I wouldn't be don't get too caught up on plans change you know the whole time and like I, I couldn't say you know people I, I took out a pension that you know started a pension last year we'll say and they're planning on mm. my age you want to retire and I'm like well, hopefully never <laughs> yeah. I'm like 60 I, I, I don't know but it's, it's very difficult to know how you how how the business will be in five years time like say I could ha- still love it the same amount in 10 years time and I'll want to open I, I might have four cars and I want to open 10 or else I'm like actually do you know what I'm happy with the, the setup I have, I'm happy yeah. with the money I have coming in. I just want to take a back seat. I want to spend time with family or whatever like that. So I think you kind of it's difficult to make long term plans because you don't know what your frame of mind will be in that. Um, you just do, yeah. Market like market conditions always change. So they like, do, yeah. It's just a factor of all companies really. Like everything kind of advances like technology wise yeah. and people wise and what people want is always going to be different. Like. But just embrace it, like you know, it's like it's like with car sales. It's a lot of businesses, especially when they've quite a lot of overhead to say like we've quite a high overheads here as you can imagine with, with 10 staff and three buildings yeah, like yeah. but like unlike a lot of businesses like that we don't apart from a few maybe small repeat service customers or businesses that get our car service there we so you start every month with a blank slate mm-hmm. you have to sell x number of cars to break even or mind making profit so it's like you actually approach every month like starting fresh and you have business to win every month you know yeah. what i mean so it's like every month starts fresh again and it's a new challenge over and over. You know? And you have a responsibility now as an employer because you've got, as you said, 10 staff. Yeah, a lot of them, that, a lot of them have kids. That have kids orders. that have to be fed. And so, like, that's something my father said years ago, I remember. He's like, yeah, there's a responsibility. It was actually the start of COVID, I think. There's a responsibility to pay your staff. Like, mm. Now you've taken on not only your own business, but now you've got people's families who yeah. you're not in charge of, but you're, you have to make sure they get paid in order to feed their kids, pay their mortgage. It is. That. So that's a new it, thing. Like, you take on a lot of new stuff. You do. And that people don't even think about when you become an employer. And you, you, you have to show up every day. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, you, you, it's like, sometimes you have a bad week and, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I don't want to be doing this. But you have a responsibility. <laughs> you have to keep this wheel turning. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And there's it, some pe- that's usually the downfall of people's businesses, new businesses. They don't want to work it. They were like, oh yeah, I'll just hire 10 staff and I'll just sit at home all day. Like, it, it would yeah. fail. Like, it yeah, would yeah. Fail. Like, it feels from top down, right? Because they it, don't care. Like, I'm he's saying here, I'm first in nearly every morning and I'm last to leave nearly every evening again. Sounds like, oh, hustle porn. Like, oh, yeah. But like, 
you have to you have to show by if if I don't if I didn't care about what went on, how mm. would the name of God am I supposed to expect anyone else here to care yeah, about? Because if you landed on here at ten o'clock every morning, yeah, ten o'clock with a hangover, and I'm like, oh lads, we we'll sell a few cars today, we'll yeah, yeah, and then we bother, and I have to way early. <laughs> so, like that's going to like even indirectly, like that's going to it's going to change the culture of a place here, and it's going to yeah. it's going to make people you know care less about it. Yeah, because like, Paul doesn't care, so why am I supposed to care? Yeah, because Marty yeah. would say like. Yeah. I'm sure Paul won't be here till 10, I'll just show up at half nine. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. what happened. And it was well, even like that, that'll seep into like sloppiness in terms of getting back to customers. Um, you know, I've worked in places before like that. If, if they say, let's say the boss didn't care or let's say the overall culture of business was a bit kind of, eh, it changes the whole place. Like, you know, yeah. but you have to be enthusiastic coming in. You have to mm. be enthusiastic. You know, we have to bring back people straight away. We have to deal with inquiries well. You have to want the business. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like, there is an abundance of business out there. Yeah. There is like, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I know you've obviously just started your coffee business and everything yeah. like that, but like there's so much business out there. And even we, I, I often see, I look around and other people in business would say, and there's so many really good people in business, but if you look around, there's a lot of bang average. People yeah. yeah there there is, and yeah. I know, you know, there's, there's people that just have no interest in it and they're just throwing away business and opportunity right left and center. Yeah. There's a, if you want to work, in again I can speak mostly for the motor trade but like I can, I'm sure it's in a lot of areas if you want to work and you want to put in the hours put in the effort, like there, there's there's endless opportunities at the moment like places can't even get staff yeah, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. I mean? that just, yeah, that just yeah. goes to show like you know the, the staff and shortage is nuts like a lot of people are having problems with that you know, McDonald's yeah. even across across the road from us here like they, they had to like, shorten their hours I'm pretty sure before Christmas because they couldn't yeah. get staff like yeah, yeah. It's, I think a lot of that is it is going back to like the COVID and a lot of people having the support yeah. that they're now comfortable at home and don't want to go potentially go into work, which is a lot of other countries are having this situation, but it's not as widely reported here in the US. That is definitely happening. They're having mm. they're offering people like double their wages to work like in McDonald's, offering them fifty quid to turn up for an interview. Yeah, or iPhones. And if they in, if yeah. you get past the interview, you get a new iPhone and stuff. Like that. Yeah. yeah, so you yeah. really incentivize people to come back into the workforce. Like so, it's something like sixty four um, percent of the workforce in America was actually working and now it's like down to about 58%. So that's a huge amount of people that have now left the workforce that's, for the last yeah. year. So yeah, it's it, pretty nuts. That's mad. Like I suppose there's a lot of, I suppose there's there's part of the, the supports were necessary even with COVID. We know yeah. they were necessary for oil. Uh, obviously there's people now that are milking the system a bit. Like yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone knows that. Like, But I suppose with COVID, it, it, people got a bit too cushy kind of sitting at home yeah, and absolutely. you know, working hard was almost, uh, you know, People were to say, "Ah, oh, you're that's the foolish option." Almost like for some people, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah. it's um like we wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want that to be create a new culture of of younger people growing up without a without a work. Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? and like, that will happen because when we get when we get happen, when we we've had a few we've a few younger guys work for us moment. They're all great workers, and but like when you see a, a younger person now with a great work, it's fantastic. It's like, surprising. It's surprising. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, saying yeah. like geez, I'm speaking from the old fella here, like but like. You know, or when you can you can talk to a younger person and they um, you know, when they you know they talk back to you and have good social skills. Like you know, so when the younger generation are brought up on computer screens, I think a lot of a certain level of of, of yeah. one on one personal skills kind well, of school age like definitely has been affected. Yeah, like yeah. Menta- their mental capability to talk to people, especially if you say even going to college. Like so when you go into college, that's when you kind of say become yourself and meet more people. You do your networking. You come out with yourself. But if you're doing that from and home, it's not, yeah, and it's not happening. Think about it, like you know, I think people will, will see in years to come, like the last years of yeah, the things absolutely. with you know, and like obviously COVID restrictions and whether that, that that's that's a whole different discussion altogether. But de- definitely, mm. people lost a lot of COVID, lost a lot of people's one on one things, and like yeah, younger yeah. people, like you do a lot of social development, like in your first even couple of years in college, like mm-hmm. yeah, that. absolutely. You know, you did a good social development. Social development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good social development. <laughs> yeah, I did four years of good social development in, yeah, I did in college and never half a year of good social development. Yeah, very good, I say, though. Well, I did two half years. You did two half, half years, year. yeah. yeah. I was still there for the whole year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of what you learn in college as well, like, you know, like, I did business in college. I was there for four years. I have a degree in business and marketing, mm. we'd say. But, like, you know what you look back on it is like yeah you pick, I picked up a few bits and pieces here but like it's it's yeah. like a lot of the relationships you build and you become you're from going from school to workforce and it's kind of like you're in between child yeah. to adult period yeah. I suppose yeah. now, I don't think you're an adult when you're fresh out of college but well, you are technically but yeah, 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 yeah. it's a uh, you know that's that's an important transition for people like and it's a lot of the times that people's friends for life or the people that they met through 
drinking in college yeah, and that, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. You know? 100%. And people, you meet people of kind of the same, you meet people that are from your area in school, but you meet people that are your same interests in college, I think. So yeah, yeah, they're, it's, they're a more like, it's a different They're more likely yeah, to be yeah. kind of longer term yeah. friends, like, you know, so. I could find a question that I don't really know if it's going to be an answer for, but to bring it to the car industry, so Tesla are obviously on about this yeah. autonomous driving, mm. so it'll all be automated driving. How long away do you think that potentially be? I know I don't expect you to have an answer, but it's just a question. That's a, I, I think that's a while away yet, like, you know. Here, anyway. In Ireland. In Ireland. In terms of, like, mass adoption, like, yeah. they're doing it everywhere. Yeah, so the US are saying 2025 for oh, America. It's just three years away. Yeah. Yeah. Where right. it'll be used common. America is so different though. I know it's quite roads like yeah, yeah, yeah. Could years. I see it before? I, I, I could probably maybe end up eating more. Could I see it before twenty forty? Properly, everyone doing it. I don't know. Can I really? Yeah. To be honest, I think that's yeah. a, that's a while away. Like uh, like it's, and, and especially right, you might get away with a bit more in America. But say Irish people yeah. are so skeptical as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can imagine now. Johnny that's been driving Toyotas for the last 50 years and I wouldn't trust that joke that was a vibe itself <laughs> now there is close to like I found in the there's a lot of like, like driver assisting cars driver, yeah, it's yeah. tough to crash a lot of newer cars you yeah. know there's, you're, they're pulling you in if you're yeah, yeah they keep you on the road yeah, especially yeah. on the motorway like you can turn on your cruise control it's adaptive cruise control it will slow down to the car in front of you the wheel will stay on but if you have your hand off the wheel for 8 seconds yeah it will start crying mm, at you like yeah, yeah, scream yeah. at you so it you does yeah. your hands on the wheel like but, so, like electric cars in general, like they're, they're very expensive. Like they're still very expensive. They are. You don't really get a whole lot of electric stuff in here. I, you? You've hybrid. You've got we, hybrid. We, we, yeah, we've had a good few hybrids. Like yeah. they, they kind of make sense for a lot of people now. Um, but still, people coming in here, like it, it's like I know the Green Party don't want me to say this, but like people do want diesels a lot. Oh, they do. Yeah. Especially yeah. We're Dungarvan, like we're yeah, really yeah, yeah. people that commute to Waterford. Some people commute to Cork. They're still the cheapest mm. to run. Like, well, and um, new cars are yeah. still, I was only looking at it yesterday, 68% this year were diesel. Still were they? Cars, like, Jeez, I wouldn't talk to them that much. Yeah. I thought a lot of places weren't even making diesels. So yeah, well, like a lot of places aren't because Toyota have scrapped diesel. Toyota scrapped um, diesel a good few years ago. 2018. Yeah. Hyundai haven't scrapped it, but they've scrapped it in the Kona. They've scrapped it in the, yeah, the Kona Di30. You can only get one model in diesel. So they're scrapping it, like, but it's still 67%. Like, yeah. France, yeah. France is the first country where they ban diesel cars being produced and sold. Some by twenty twenty. Yeah, because I know Renault stopped altogether, but I yeah. think they still make a vans up. Yeah, so I don't yeah. know what the yeah. So vans and lorries are probably a different situation. Ah, uh, yeah, but I don't. I don't think they're kind of set up for for fully electric, right? And like, yeah, uh, like, to be yeah. honest, like it's I don't think the, the facilities aren't there. Like I think, like electric, like the thing is, we, we it'll all go that way. Like you know, obviously Irish government, and to be honest, I'm sure it's a lot of governments is just tax tax them out of the, the economy. Like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. full time. Like even with the the new BRT changes this year. Like you know, they they raised the BRT on a load of cars, mm-hmm. and um, like I don't, I'm pretty sure they didn't reduce the BRT on any of the ones they wanted to sell. So just a tax increase. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Um, which I thought was for even for imports, like the car price in Ireland have just shot up, yeah. right? Used cars no, in the yeah. last 12, 18 months, twelve months especially. But like, the Brexit one happened at that was on we couldn't affect you know that's just that's just um environmental you know that that's the thing that happened we couldn't do anything about that. Then, but then they increase the BRT and the NOx charges as well, and then mm-hmm. you add that, all that into the stock shortages brought from the shortage of new cars. But like it was almost criminal the way they increased the BRT still during out all yeah. this COVID. Like it's just made it makes, makes no sense. Cars. You, you cannot you you like you cannot import like when I mean, you can't import them. What was kept prices down in Ireland for years was the the cheap imports yeah. and mm-hmm. the competition yeah. for cheap imports. And you can't do it anymore. You can't do yeah. it anymore. I got I had customers coming in a year after getting the same price for their trade in. 12 months ago off me mm. as they were last month you know what I mean like it's crazy we've, we've like, yeah. the same like you know we've, 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 I've sold cars to people there's a couple of them now lately that I've sold cars in 2020 and I've bought it back off them for the same money they paid for it because it's now worth more even though it's older yeah it's crazy mm. like yeah, yeah, you know, no, it's, it, but yeah like, it has to stop like, like that's like, yeah. that's all well and good now and it's fine and, and the reason I suppose why it's it's working you know on our kind of business model of buying cars for people is because of that exact reason but yeah. that's not going to keep going up and they're happy with what you're giving them well of course they are because it, you know they haven't lost much or if anything yeah. or you yeah, know it's a fair really. price like but you know that th- there has to be an end point to this like yeah. and look, is the process getting stuff from the uk just completely no, no it, it, it's, it's not it? um it, it, it's not no there's and there's still garages doing doing large volumes a lot bringing in cars from japan as well 
Um, yeah. I think Japan, in my opinion, is a little bit of a fad at the moment. I think people are just jumping on it just to fill yeah. the void. And the cars are nice though. Yeah, they the are. The cars really. are nice because they're a little bit different. Like I seen, a, I seen a lovely golf the other day, and I asked your man where he got it. They're, they're all really smaller different. engine automatic. Yeah, pensions, and it was really. it was yeah. a lovely metallic purple. Yeah, you mm-hmm. from, from factory looking. Yeah, I thought it was really cool looking, but like. At the end of the day, what are you waiting 12 weeks for your car to get here? Look longer. I think it's, I, I, yeah, I looked into it, it's around 12 weeks, and it's just, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of paperwork with it as well. And, um, you know, you have to pay up, you even just cash flow, you have to, most of them they do kind of, you pay half at the start to get the order in, and half yeah. when they land. Like, that's what a few of the, now I stand corrected, I'm sure there's other ones doing it differently, but yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I've looked into. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for our point of view, look, we haven't needed to do it yet. Um, some places have done it and I think some places do quite well out of it. Yeah. But it's uh yeah, it's it's that's kinda of the way the way things are. But again, go back to the UK imports, like that will probably come back, like, you know, Ireland was needed. It would come back more so what's kinda of stopped it is the sudden increase in the say the import duty, uh um, yeah, the, yeah. the the VAT implications that were that are there now we'll say. And also that on top of UK prices are staying really strong. Yeah. They've gone up too. The price, cost cost of UK customers buying UK cars has gone up. Again, tied into the massive demand after COVID and charge new cars again yeah. due to the semiconductor shortages. Like so, all that together just made it suddenly like okay, cars that you would have imported into Ireland for thirteen thousand now it's costing you like nineteen thousand. Let's say yeah. Now so it's just it just kind of it just made the option just unappealing. But things level out again. It was unprecedented times COVID, but a lot was down to COVID as well. And yeah, load, 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 load of was like so. What a word like unprecedented. I don't think I've ever heard it so many times. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Unprecedented. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so true. No, unprecedented. Yeah. They'll figure it out though, like because the Brexit just came in new, like a hard yeah. fork. Like and these things will be figured out over time. Like I think like they're predicting towards the end of this year supply chain things will start to figure out. I think the so, semiconductor yeah. thing will start easing like it's also present with like PlayStation fives like yeah. you can't get PlayStation fives because they couldn't make enough chips for them like which is crazy. Which yeah. is crazy, yeah. I'm just thought they would have had time time but because the camera will run out. We of are it. on forty six minutes. Yeah we better So we better finish yeah, up. Yeah we're just a camera run Time flies man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the longest figure? one we've done so That's far. the longest podcast yet yeah. <laughs> Sorry Paul, for Paul keeping Paul are good at talking. Guilty as charged. Yeah, if you don't take anything else away from this, <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy a car from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, go check out paulo'connorcars. Is that right? Paulo'connorcars. Is that Yeah, on and Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, we'll link it all down in the description. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, leave a comment. Um, we'll see you. Guys? We'll see you in yeah. the next one. I we'll suppose. see you in the next one, guys. Thank you all. Thanks for having me. Nice one. Cheers, man.